Charlie McConnell, Charlie Arthur McConnell. And I was a seaman, got him up to first class, and there we were. I uh, had a little uh, experience. My, one of uh, ten children, daddy was married twice, and I uh, was the youngest boy of the second wife he had, and uh, all the rest of them was already in the service. And uh, I asked my daddy to get permission so I could uh, uh, go and get in the Navy that uh, I didn't want to be no foot soldier, a Marine, a, a foot soldier, or whatever you want to call him. And anyway, uh, he finally consented, and I got a, uh, uh, the day that I got my Graduated from high school, was on a third, a Wednesday, and uh, the following Monday, I needed to be in uh, uh, Camp Perry, Virginia, and they had sent me a card the same day that I graduated from high school, and uh, I, uh, and to uh, how to get there, and I got on a uh, I trained in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. I was born in a little town called Jenkinsville, just above Columbia. And uh, we uh, go to, uh, uh, I uh, got on the, the train and they carried me up to Richmond, Virginia. When I got out and off the train there, they had a bus to pick me up along with others. And, went out to uh, Williamsburg, Virginia, and then a little place called Camp Perry, Virginia. That's where we started our boot camp training. When we got there, they said, uh, Fort, uh, we uh, have uh, boot camp training. We're gonna take you 14 weeks to get through it this year. And uh, after Two weeks, they cut it to ten. And after two more weeks, they cut it to six. Then two more weeks later, <laughs> they cut it to two. And before you knew it, we were sitting on the bus going to Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, it was a town like Georgetown is to uh, uh, Mayorville. It had a little place there called Naponset. And it was uh, where our ship was being uh, built. And uh, we went to a movie up there, and uh, this was in the fall of the year now. And, uh, we uh, come out, and we had four inches of snow on the sidewalks. <laughs> it was kind of amazing. but. Up there, they uh, said they parked the car in the park. <laughs> and that was the kind of slang that they had going on up there. Anyway, uh, after having a little exercise with the snow and everything, we got our ship and we came down to the Chesapeake Bay and had some cruises around in Chesapeake Bay in Norfolk. And uh, matter of fact, I got a uh, weekend pass to come home and go back to uh, <laughs> Norfolk, and the ship was still there. But then we pulled out of there and went and come on down to uh, uh, along the uh, coast of North Carolina. And uh, uh, couldn't see land. We was out far enough to wasn't uh, uh, seeing no land, but we come on down to uh, uh, Key West, Florida, and uh, we had one guy, and I can't remember his name, but he was a radio man. And we get into Caribbean Sea, and had to put him midship of the ship. It was traveling maybe eight, ten miles an hour. 
But uh, it took us a good while to get across the Caribbean Sea to Panama. When we got to Panama, the skipper went and uh, talked to him and says, son, he says, uh, do you want me to sign you off here in Panama or do you want to wait till we get to San Diego? He says, uh, I, I don't think you're going to be well enough for sea duty. And uh, he says, I'll get off here. And we get out in the Pacific, and you never seen a bigger lake than that was as beautiful as <laughs> the Pacific Ocean was at that time. And uh, we get up to San Diego and spent a couple of nights there, and then on up to Los Angeles and San Francisco. Then we pull out to Pearl Harbor, and uh, we get over there and. Uh, leaving that fellow behind was an ordeal. We had to pick up another radio man to take care of his place. But uh, we saw two typhoons out there. And then it was the experience after we did some. Now, we had to have uh, uh, cruising with the destroyer or destroyer escort. Uh, because we didn't have nothing but radar. We didn't have no sonar. That means it's down below and for submarines and all. And uh, we had to have one of them uh, with us to uh, keep us informed about whether it was a submarine down there or not. Anyway, uh, uh, we did p patrol duty with them off of Okinawa, and uh, and then we had, after the war was pretty well over with, we went down to the Philippines to spend some time down there. And uh, we was in a convoy of, uh, and typhoon, uh, we had two typhoons, as I say, and one of them, we had an old uh, big destroyer that was, uh, uh, it was uh, built before World War One. It was uh, in that World War One convoy. That, uh, but it, it uh, uh, that typhoon went and uh, broke it in half, and quite a few uh, men got uh, drowned and whatnot. We was able to save a few of them was on the destroyer that we was on. I mean, the ship that I was on is not by one, but about 158 feet long, so we couldn't pull up too many men out of the water, but we got a few. But uh, then we're going up to uh, Tokyo Bay and spent some time up there. And then we had another typhoon that uh, we was pulling out, but we'd uh, had uh, a rare admiral that wanted to hitch a ride on our ship because it was so small to uh, get back to Pearl Harbor so he could be on to uh, carry a, a bigger ship. And uh, that's all he'd ever served on. Anyway, uh, they, we got orders to uh, turn back into an all small ship, turn back into a cove or go back into... Tokyo Bay, and uh, he was blessing our skipper out. He was just a lieutenant commander or whatever. Anyway, he said, that, well, I get the orders. This is my ship, and you just hitching a ride with us. He said, we got to, I got to go back in. And we was in a, a swell when we made the turn. <laughs> We listed 60 degrees, <laughs> and the, the, the skipper finally got it where it was pushing us then back to shore. And uh, that uh, rear admiral, he was, uh, had been blessing him out, said, you did a swell job with that. Uh, you know how to do these little smaller ships. And uh, he, he, 
he finally went and uh, uh, we rode it out and we did take him on in to Pearl Harbor, but uh, uh, he realized that he was in the other man's land, <laughs> so to speak. That, that, that was a, that was an ordeal for him, I guess, too, because he had served on nothing but big uh, well, aircraft carriers and uh, uh, big destroyers and whatnot, you know, cruisers and hell. Yeah. But uh, it was an ordeal for him, too. But then we got into Pearl Harbor, and uh, that's where I got some tattoos, too. And, uh, and I got talked into them, but uh, we went up to uh, San Francisco and went on up to uh, Columbia River, Portland, Oregon, and uh, I had enough time in to get out, and uh, I'd signed up for, uh, they had a T-12 program going on, and I spent two years, two months, 26 days, and 10 hours in Uncle Sam Navy. A 20 millimeter was my gun station whenever they called us to uh, whatnot. And I served as a boats and mate, third class, uh, a third class seaman or whatever you want to call it. But and they'd call me whenever we go to dock on a, in, in a docking space they always call me to the helm to turn to turn the uh, ship a little bit to the left or the right or whatever. But uh, the skipper was uh, up on the conning tower and was letting me know and down through a tube uh, what he wanted me to do. And I would say, aye, aye, sir, whatever. To get, but... Uh, no, I think I hit one of those uh, planes, but they uh, we could get pe Tokyo Rose on the uh, uh, radio that we had, and he, she would say, "You Yanks, go home. You Yanks, go home." <laughs> it was amazing, <laughs> and she would say that uh, uh, we're sending out planes now that they have already uh, had their funeral and they went to their own funeral and they would dive bomb uh, and stay with the ship or their plane until they hit the uh, ship but they'd like to hit the bigger ships not the one that I was on and that was a, a blessing to us but uh, they would we did get some uh, uh, one that hit the uh, water uh, one occasion where it hit the water and splashed water up on our fan tail. That's how close he'd come to <laughs> hitting our ship. But uh, I've always said that the ship was not a boat because a boat can be put on another ship. An LCSL-117. In other words, it was similar to an LCI, but it didn't have no ramps on the side because an LCI took Marines or soldiers in and they would run down that ramp whenever they beached an LCI, but we was similar to an LCI, but we had more ammunition and more when we was doing patrol duty off Okinawa and uh, south of uh, Okinawa. But uh, it was, uh, it took us to get loaded up with food and ammunition because we had, like I say, around 85 uh, officers and personnel 
on board the ship that we was on. And it's got to be a ship because it was never, like I say, that was the old Navy way of saying, as, as long as it's a ship, it doesn't be put on another ship. <laughs> but uh, it was uh, one of those, uh, but, uh, we, and we saw two typhoons while we was over there, and they could be kind of rough. But that's about the experience I got when after we got into the States coming back, uh, we spent a little uh, couple of weeks down in San Francisco and uh, anchored off there. And then we went on up to uh, the Columbia River and uh, that's when I got off and got on a train and started coming back to the States, uh, South Carolina. One shell uh, got hung up in the uh, rack because they was in magazines that you uh, load on, and uh, it hit uh, uh, shrapnel from, the, from it, got me on here, and it's just a little spot now, but you see these places, that was from that, and the uh, officer went and told me, said, let me put you in for a Purple Heart. I said, no, I got too many people, there's brothers, half-brothers and all, and uh, I prefer not to even mention it, and that's the way it stood. And it was an uh, ordeal that I think was uh, very proper because I have, it was uh, three boys, half brothers, and one brother. I have, I'd lived them all except one uh, uh, half brother. Uh, he lives in Andrews, named uh, Bill McConnell. But uh, he's, uh, and he's 92 years old. It shot down four planes. Yeah, it got credit for that anyway. I think it might have shot down more than that because uh, those uh, uh, Tokyo roads would keep us informed about, says, well, we got some, Planes out there now that uh, they've already gone to their own funeral. They're going to uh, suicide uh, planes. They're going to hit some ships out there. And that's the way uh, Tokyo Rose would talk. But and when, it came, when she'd come on the air, she would say, You Yanks, go home. You Yanks, go home. I was just feeling like I hoped mine and would hit one of them. <laughs> and I'm sure it did because I was a pretty good shot, so they told me. And with a 20 millimeter now. But uh, it, every third round was a flare round, and they would come up out of the water. And they would always try to come between sunset and dark. And uh, whether they was a suicide plane or not, they would still uh, unload their, all their gunpowder themselves, you know, before war. And we didn't, uh, we actually didn't have anybody in the convoy that we was in, uh, uh, destroyers and uh, the, uh, same size ship that we were on. None of them got in too bad of trouble. We was in the convoy with a, uh, a destroyer that was uh, a World War I made that uh, well, it didn't get messed up from the uh, uh, Japs. It was messed up on the count it was in rough water. And it, it's pretty well, uh, you know, uh, just broke up in half. 
And that's about the size of it. Well, uh, I lived in a little, uh, well, a two, uh, a five room house because uh, it was quite a few of us still at home. But uh, I was still going to school and I was in 1941 with Pearl Harbor. We didn't have any radio or any, uh, uh, I learned about it. Uh, Pearl Harbor Day, it happened on the weekend, but I heard about Monday going to school. And I was in, I guess, uh, I was in the junior in high school or something like that. But a little town, it's called Jenkinsville. That's one reason why I wanted, I didn't want to be no foot soldier. That's one thing. And see, I was the small, I was the youngest uh, boy on dad's uh, agenda with, uh, uh, he had uh, three boys and two girls from his first wife and then she passed away and married my mother who uh, she's passed on now too but she, uh, uh, with that said, uh, I was the baby boy of the group and like I say, I got a half brother lives in Andrews that's uh, uh, about uh, 10 years older than I am. Yeah, they were drafted though, see? And that's what I didn't want. <laughs> and my, uh, I had one, Andrew was uh, in the Navy and Robert, he was, he joined the Navy too to uh, be, a, not be a foot soldier. And that's the way it happened with us. And the girls, uh, and some of them passed on now too. So uh, I have a sister. Got two sisters left and a half brother left out of 10 children. So it's four of us still alive. Uh, what I spent in the service was uh, well spent, I felt, and uh, uh, like I say, uh, it was a T12 program going on right after uh, when I got my diploma from high school. There was uh, an experience with uh, uh, the Navy was usually you had to sign up for four, six, eight years. But by me, uh, uh, they had a program called a T12 program that uh, was uh, uh, two months after the war was over, was uh, you could get back out. And that's the way I uh, joined up to uh, go in, uh, in the service. And I spent two years two months, 26 days, and 10 hours. Went, come into, into Charleston, and uh, the bridge that they uh, have uh, torn down and took it out and made it a fish hatchery, a uh, uh, haven for the fish, uh, I went down there to see if I couldn't get a job after I got back to Charleston. And uh, they said, so are you too young? I said, I've sat in a boats and chair before and did some painting on this ship that I was on. Mm -hmm. Ah, you too young. So I uh, worked out with the Charleston Rebels and uh, they, uh, Chick Autry, it was a minor league uh, team in Charleston. And uh, Chick Autry says uh, to me, he says, uh, I'm sorry, I wish I could keep you, but I can't have the 25 players. 
He said, you go up to Georgetown, Lake City, King Street, uh, some of them, t I understand they're going to have uh, semi-pro teams up in there and going to call it the Palmetto League. And this was 1946. And uh, so uh, I uh, catch me a bus and uh, Greyhound bus and come up to Georgetown get off and it was on April the 1st, I believe it was, of uh, 47, 1947. And I was walking down Front Street and old John Hardy run a liquor store right beside the Fogel uh, Motel, Hotel. And he was leaning up on one of those uh, uh, meter posts <coughs> that you had to put the coins in to uh, park. And uh, I walked up to him and spoke to him and I said, where can I get a job, uh, you think? Uh, he said, well, oh, Shelly Johnson running a uh, service station down there for Parish, Joe Parish, Parish Motor Company. And he says, uh, he might can use you. I said, well, I come up here to play baseball, and I understand they're going to have all-night games. He said, yeah, you, we're going to have a team here that's going to be worked out in two weeks, man. You might be able to play on it. I said, I'm going to play on it. And uh, so I went, walked down on the town clock, on down to where Shelly Johnson, he said, yeah, I can use you. He says, it'll be all daytime work, and you want to play ball? I said, yeah, I want to play ball. So I uh, went to work with him, and uh, I played ball that summer. And uh, matter of fact, I played the next four years through 52, and they closed up the league. But what was another instance was that Dr. Seals' daddy, ran Kaminsky Hardware Wholesale Hardware Store. And uh, he'd always come by the store there, uh, the service station, on his way home. And he, I knew him from him being Dr. Seal's daddy. And his name was Richard Seal. And I, he said, Mac, I want to talk to you when you get through with that car. So I uh, <laughs> waited around. When I got through with the car, I walked over to him and I'm looking for somebody that's got his service experience behind him would like to work in a wholesale store. I said, you looking at him? And this was on a Saturday afternoon. Well, you working here? I said, yeah, but I, I'm uh, ready to uh, change jobs. I ain't getting enough uh, uh, money coming in. And he said, well, we, you work 42 hours a week and get paid for 43, we start you off at 37.50. I said, I'll be to work Wednesday with you. And uh, I went in there and told Shelly, I said, Shelly, I'm gonna work with you too, through uh, uh, next Tuesday. And I'm gonna work in the hardware store. And he says, sure hate to leave you, to see you go. But it's, that's the way it is, that's the way it is. But you know, back in those days, you could go into Thomas's Cafe, who's not run by the Thomases now, but old man E.C. Thomas, uh, Pete Thomas's daddy, when he was running the uh, Thomas's Cafe, you could get two strips of bacon, two eggs soft scramble, grits, two slices of toast, cup of coffee, and a second cup uh, you could get with no price on it, 35 cents. Now that was a good breakfast and a good meal for, I mean, <laughs> that was back in the days when <laughs> it was something else, I'll tell you. But I went to work then in the hardware store now, and I'm still working in the hardware store.